Good morning, News from FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. I'm at the CCA Global Meeting in Nashville, and I'm with John Gilbert, the president of Carpet One Floor and Home. John, how you doing? I'm doing great, Kemp. It's good to see you again. It's been a while. Unfortunately, most people know you had to cancel your January meeting, so we missed that opportunity. Let's run through your background real quick. You live in Vermont on a fruit tree farm. You look great. You look healthy because your wife's an athlete, and she keeps you running. I think you've been here, what, three and a half, four years? Just over four years, last week, actually. You're an outsider. I mean, your core career has been focused on building brands and the restaurant business, the retail business. You, you worked with Kentucky Fried Chicken and TJ Maxx, and you started your career selling uh, IBM Selective Typewriters, That's right? That's exactly right. That was a long time ago. Most of your listeners probably won't even remember what a typewriter is. Uh-huh. All right, so let's talk, I guess, a little bit of a downer, because I've been writing editorials trying to convince our readers that uh, we're not in a recession, but we did hear yesterday from the stage that we are in a classic definition of a recession, right? Yeah, Connor Lokar, an economist from ITR Economics that's been part of our convention family now for about four or five years, shared the news yesterday in a lighthearted yet concerning way that there is certainly the traditional definition of a recession we have met. I think the members weren't totally surprised. I think they see a slight downturn in their business, or maybe a different way to say it is a mix shift from residential to commercial. Generally, the business is still very good, so we're pretty excited about that. I think the the silver lining to Connor's announcement was that it doesn't look like it's going to be a particularly profound recession, and so we're glad to hear that, and he even went as far as saying that some pockets of our business will thrive. Yeah, he said it's just going to last three or four quarters, and there was one coming anyway. It's just sooner than he thought, right? Yeah, and so in an interesting way, if you're into this thing two or three months now, that's one quarter down, so maybe there's just a couple left. All right, so uh, the big story at this meeting is your rollout of Retail 2.0. It's a program that turns a flooring store a lot like uh, an Apple store. I mean, it's just a total game changer in the way people shop and the way things are merchandised and how you integrate technology. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I think that if you if you borrow the sort of Apple Store comparison, we're looking at some of the thing, same things that I'm sure Apple considered a decade ago when they were designing their stores, which is make it easier for the customer to shop. You know, we know from decades of research, both our own and industry research, the consumers, customers were highly frustrated with the retail flooring shopping experience. It was uh, off-putting, it was difficult, it was cluttered. The basic consumer behavior is the harder you make things for consumers, the less interested they are in your product. So fundamentally, the core of what we're calling Retail 2.0 is to make it easier for customers to shop with the belief that if it's easier to shop, they'll buy faster, they'll buy more, and they'll give you a better review. We already have amazing reviews. Our members average out at about 4.7. So it's hard to imagine it going higher, but it can. It can go to 4.8, 4.9, or 5. But that's the primary catalyst for the change. You did some research, and statistics were telling you, and we've heard this before, that 40% of the consumer that comes in looking for flooring walks away because they were confused, right? Yeah, I would say the uh, number's probably even higher than that. We'd see about anywhere from 60 to 70% of the consumers who start the flooring journey, mostly online, drop out at some point in time because it becomes too, too complex, too challenging. That doesn't mean they drop out of our stores. They drop out of the whole journey. And so our belief is if we can capture just you know one of those consumers before they leave the process, that represents a massive, you know, 20, 25% growth in top line sales for us. You've done some pilot testing with this. You started with hard surface, then you moved over to carpet, and you've got some pretty, you know, nice statistics. I know you don't want to share them, your competition to here, but this system works, right? Yeah, the message to our competition is it's a horrible failure. The message to our members is it's been a terrific success. We're seeing double-digit sales growth every time we touch a showroom in the pilot process in both hard and soft surfaces. So that adds up to a nice top-line lift in the showrooms overall, which you know we're obviously seeing translate to a stronger bottom line. One of the things that's interesting is that while there's an investment that has to be made with the store owner, that the payback has been less than six months, right? Yeah, if, it's an, if an average showroom does the same kind of results that we've done in the pilots, the, the payback period in terms of how long it takes to 
pay off the investment with the incremental profits from the sales the investment drives is really quick. So we're very excited about that. The in investment is not insignificant. And knowing our members, they're going to go above and beyond what the basic package costs. It's a great opportunity to update the whole showroom. Uh, and in many cases, members have kept their showrooms updated, so that's not an implication or a suggestion that they haven't. But this would be a great time to look at the floors, to look at the paint, to look at the lighting. You know, lighting's really important, so that's probably one that members will look hard at. I think one of the key things that I like about it and the research we've done is it reduces the clutter. So you're going uh, longer on fewer SKUs, and it right. just makes sense, right? Right, right. Yeah, I think that's the, you know, the definition of productivity is getting more with less. And so this is a classic case study in productivity improvements. We're, we're, we have fewer SKUs and more sales. So that has all kinds of tremendous potential, including the ability of our owner-operators to figure out how to translate that increase in productivity into better operating systems. And so, you know, we don't operate, we the co-op staff don't operate showrooms. But when members get a hold of this, and this is something we haven't talked a lot about because we just don't have any good data, when members get a hold of this, they're going to be able to find all kinds of clever ways to extract even more productivity out of the showroom. One example would be the uh, the digital package is, that's part of Retail 2.0. It uses QR codes to help members price the floor. And so instead of the old days of running around with a three-ring binder, members and customers will be able to identify the price of products virtually instantly using a, a QR code reader. So we're really excited about the potential of that. Let's shift. Let's talk about one of the scary things that a lot of people are worried about, and that's the uh, share take with the home centers. We saw they were they, you know, allowed to stay open during the pandemic, and then you've got Floor and Decor, who's got this a very aggressive plan for growth. So I'm sure that's one of the challenges you are keeping your attention on. How are you doing versus uh, these national threats? Yeah, I mean, we look at market share every every quarter, and we're holding our own, in some cases gaining against uh, the other independents, and then holding our own with the big boxes. They're a terrific set of competitors, and there's no question between the uh, the two sort of Lowe's and Home Depot, and then obviously Floor and Decor presents a different kind of challenge. You know, honestly, I think we cater to a slightly different type of customer. We are clearly serving a, you know, a more of a full-service occasion, if you will, with the installation as part of what we do and a big part of what we do. And so I do think there's some barriers to entry, if you will, into our slice of the industry. We're not taking any great comfort in that. That's not a big, fat moat that keeps everybody away. We still have to work hard to make our business attractive to customers. But as it goes so far, and this is anecdotal, but when a floor and decor opens near one of our showrooms, we feel a surge in, in traffic because customers who are interested in flooring see that we're there. They may not have known we were there. Floor decor pops up, and that's a bit of a magnet for the trade area. Not sure that's a good thing to, to count on long term, but certainly it's been a source of some business for us in, in the most recent past. This is interesting. You know, one of the things that you, one way of beating floor and decor is they're not in the installation business. But the other one, and I think it's really going to key in with the millennial, is they really want to buy from the local person. And, you know, they, they want to support that, right? I would tell you, as a retailer and restaurateur with businesses on Main Street all over this country, there is no question that local is what consumers are interested in for all kinds of reasons. Some of them altruistic, and I want to, I want to keep the money in the neighborhood. Some of them purely based upon the fact that they feel like they get better service, better product quality, and in many cases, better value. And value is not always just about price. It's a combination of attributes. We see as sort of business leaders across a wide spect spectrum of markets that local is a very strong component and thriving. All right, John, well, it sounds like you guys have been busy and now are rolling out something you've been working on for several years. I know you've been working on this uh, CRM drive. You've been working on new websites. So staff's been busy. It's great to catch up with you. Again, have been talking to John Gilbert, the president of Carpet One, Floor and Home, and you've been listening to Kemp Har and FloorDelly.net.